Today, we'll be delving deeper into how we can use LabelBox to fine tune Google's Palm 2 large language model in Vertex AI. Using the LabelBox annotate platform, we'll see how to quickly prepare a high quality fine tuning dataset using human input, how to upload that dataset to GCP using its fine tuning service, and finally, how we can see the improved model's performance. Before we get started, I'd like to share some context on the products we'll be using today, as well as some key insights as to when and why to use fine tuning. Vertex AI is GCP's cloud native platform that enables ML teams to build, deploy, and scale machine learning applications faster. Vertex AI's fine tuning API allows teams to improve their models against specific tasks. LabelBox is a data centric AI platform for building intelligent applications. It offers a powerful set of labeling orchestration, data curation, and model evaluation tools to help improve model performance. LabelBox will be the platform that we use to create a high quality fine tuning data set for this task. The goal of model fine tuning is to improve the performance of a model against a specific task. This is done by training the model with a data set containing many examples of the desired outcome. After you tune a model, fewer examples are required in its prompts which means that you'll get token savings due to the shorter prompt sizes and consequently lower latency requests. Because fine-tuned models are optimized for your specific task, they allow for faster inference and can quickly retrieve knowledge for your domain. Fine-tuning is a powerful and useful tool because it lets you get more out of your models by providing higher quality results than prompt engineering alone. It gives you the ability to train on more and diverse examples than you otherwise could fit in a single prompt, which allows the model to learn more granular patterns and semantics that are relevant to your use case. Sometimes pre-trained off-the-shelf models don't perform tasks as well as you'd like them to. This might be because the tasks you want the model to perform are specialized tasks that are difficult to teach a model with only prompt design. In such cases, you can use model tuning to improve the performance of a model on specific tasks. Model tuning can also help it adhere to specific output requirements when instructions aren't enough. Vertex AI currently supports two methods to fine tune large language models, supervised tuning and reinforcement learning with human feedback based tuning. Supervised tuning is a text option when the output of your model isn't complex and is relatively easy to define. Some examples of this include classification, sentiment analysis, and entity extraction. RLHF-based tuning is a good option when the output of your model is complex and is typically recommended for tasks such as question and answering and complex summarization. LabelBox offers integrations for both. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be focusing on supervised fine tuning. Supervised tuning improves the performance of a model by teaching it a new skill. Data that contains hundreds of labeled examples is used to teach the model to mimic a certain behavior. Each labeled example demonstrates what you want the model to output during inference. When you run a supervised fine tuning job, the model learns additional parameters that help it encode the necessary information to perform the desired task or learn the desired behavior. These parameters are then used during inference. The output of the fine tuning job is a new model that combines the newly learned parameters with the original model. The exact size and distribution of your fine tuning dataset will depend on the task at hand. As a rule of thumb, you should expect a similar amount of improvement every time you double the number of training examples. It's also important to remember that data quality matters more than data set size. Be sure to check all training examples for grammar and logic issues, as well as balance and diversity examples before submitting a fine tuning job. Some common use cases where fine tuning can be used to improve results include setting the style, 
tone, or format of the model, handling edge cases, or producing a desired structured output, such as a JSON or a list of strings, as we'll be seeing in our example. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be focusing on the use case of fine-tuning the large language model to produce the output in a specific desired structure as a list of strings. Our task will be to extract all airlines that are mentioned within a Twitter tweet. In this hypothetical, a company or airline might want to rapidly detect customer complaints, issues or emergencies, perform competitive analysis, or simply track customer sentiment analysis. Before we begin, let's explore how Google's Palm 2 off-the-shelf large language model performs against this task. Hey everyone, our goal right now is to see how Google's off-the-shelf Palm 2 model fares on the task at hand. To do so, we need to navigate to the Vertex AI dashboard within the GCP console. We then need to click on the language section within the Generative AI Studio dropdown. From here, we can see a bunch of different options to get started with our fine-tuning process. To test out the initial prompt, let's click on Text Prompt, and that will take us to the playground that allows us to type in a specific prompt, choose our model, play around with different hyperparameters, and see the corresponding response. For the task at hand, we want to be able to extract airlines from a tweet in a specific format, namely as a list of strings. So what we've done here is pasted a prompt telling the model what specific instruction it needs to do, as well as the actual tweet, in other words, on what entity the model needs to perform the task on. We've also selected the text bison model, the latest version from Palm 2. If we hit submit, we can see that currently the model is able to extract the airline, but it isn't able to do it in the format that we want, which is as a list of strings. It's only done it as a single airline as a string. What we would like to have is something where it does American air within brackets. So this is a list and it's specifically it's a list of strings. So in order to get our model to pick up on this behavior, what we need to do is go ahead and construct a fine tuning data set that explicitly shows the model what output format is desired. And so the way we do that is by navigating to the Labelbox platform. We're now within the Labelbox platform. Specifically, we're within the annotate portion of the product offering. The goal here is to create a new project, specifically the LLM data generation project type. The third option is best indicative of our use case. Namely, we want humans to create responses in the form of a list of airlines. The uploaded prompts represent the actual Twitter tweets upon which this task needs to be performed. If we hit on next, we can actually name our project and then see what the next steps are like. Hit save. This takes us to the project overview page. From here, we can add data to the project. In this case, we've already curated a sample subset of Twitter tweets upon which this task needs to be done. We can go ahead and add all these tweets to the project. Notice here there's only nine, but this can be extended to tens, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of tweets, depending on the need. We can queue the batch, specify our priority, and then submit. Notice here the green check mark indicates that data has been successfully added to the project. The next step is to set up the ontology. From here, we can click New Ontology and name our ontology as Airlines. Notice here, we now see the prompt in the form of a Twitter tweet. We next need to fill in the appropriate response. In our case, the response represents the actual instruction that the labeler needs to do. In our case, we want to extract the airlines from the tweet as a list of strings. The type should be a text, and we can hit done, and then hit save. We've now configured the project, and we can begin the labeling process. We hit start labeling. We can now see what the view would look like 
if a labeler were to go in and start labeling. So notice here, this is the tweet once again, and we need to construct our output in the form of a list of strings representing the airlines in the tweet. In this case, there's only American Airlines that's being represented. And so this is what we expect the output to be. If we hit submit, we can go ahead and continue doing this process for the rest of the data records. Once the labelers have completed labeling all the assets, we can see them in the done stage of our workflow. If we're satisfied with the quality of these labels, the next step would be to export all of them. Labelbox has a built-in functionality to do so from the UI. We can simply click on this checkbox and then select the export data v2 option. We can select all the fields or the fields that are pertinent for us and then select export JSON. This triggers an export job which can be found in the notifications tab. Once the job is completed, we can download the JSON file and open it into a text editor of choice. Over here, I've chosen VS Code. Notice how we have the nine records that we added to the annotate project and doing a quick search for the label section, we can see that the labels have been created for each of these assets. In order to get this data set ready for a fine tuning job within the Vertex AI GCP platform, we need to run an extra conversion script that takes the new line delimited JSON that we see here and converts it into a format that's compatible with the GCP fine tuning job. We can see the format of this within the GCP documentation. Notice here how each record is a new line JSON. There's an input text key followed by a question key, a context key, and the output text key. The question is akin to the task that needs to be done. In our case, it's extracting the airlines. The context is the tweet itself, and the output text would be the result, which is the list of airline in string format. We can see why the input text, output text, context, and other fields are the way they are by reading through the documentation on GCP. For the purposes of this demo, we simply need to run the conversion script that you can find in this guide. Walking through the script, we can see that we need the API key, the project ID, as well as the labels. Once we run those cells, we can forward over to this section as this is relevant to our project. Looking through the code, we can see that we're iterating through all the labels, we're obtaining the relevant fields, and finally we're constructing the format that is required by GCP, namely the input text, the question key, the context key, and the output text key. Once we run this conversion script, this is what we should see. Notice how each line is in the format that GCP expects, with the question being the prompt, which is given the following tweet, please extract the airlines as a list of strings. The context is the tweet itself, and the output text is a list of airlines within the tweet. The next step is to now take this data set and pipe it over to the Vertex AI create a tune model section. The way we got to this page is by going to the create tune model section, which can be found in tuning, or it can be found in the get started section where we create a tune model. We wanna click on supervised tuning as this is the type of tuning that is relevant for this task. We hit continue, we can name the model as Twitter airline extraction. The base model is text bison and we can keep these learning rate multipliers and training steps as is. We need to find the right working directory. In this case, I've already created a folder for myself. So I will be putting it and storing all the metadata and artifacts within that folder. This is the region that's pertinent for me. So I'll hit continue. 
Notice here that we can now choose the tuning data set. We want to select the JSONL file that was the result of running the conversion script that we saw. In my case, I can choose that right here. Finally, we need to choose the cloud storage location where the JSONL file will be stored. Once again, I will do that in my folder. If I hit continue, all the steps have been configured in order to kick off the fine tuning model job. We can hit start tuning and this will trigger the tuning process. We can see and validate the pipeline run status from this section. Right now it's pending, eventually it'll get to running and finally it'll get to succeeded. Once the model has been fine tuned, it'll say succeeded. We can now navigate over to the playground and try the prompt that we had tried earlier. To recap, what we had done was we had tried to run the instruction on the tweet using the off the shelf text bison model with the corresponding temperature and we had submit and we had noticed that it simply returned the airline without it being in a list of string format. Once we have chosen and used the fine tune model, we can go ahead and select that within the dropdown and we can run the same exact instruction that we had ran before. And if we do so, we can see that the result is in the format that we expect. So what this is showing us is that we went and took an example where off the shelf Palm 2 model wasn't doing a job, wasn't doing the job in the format that we expected it to. And so we created a fine tuning data set, we created a fine tuned model, and then we used that fine tuned model over here to update the model's understanding of what needs to be done. And we gave and fed it the same task and it outputted the result in the format we desired.